Finasteride. For many, it's the miracle pill for hair loss. A tiny tablet that promises to hold the hairline and even regrow some density. And to be fair, it does work. Thousands of men have seen dramatic improvements from it. But here's the uncomfortable truth. While finasteride can be effective, it is not risk-free. And the risk goes deeper than what is often mentioned in the glossy ads or on other YouTube videos where people tell it has no risk. So in today's video, I want to walk you through the science and what it actually says about finasteride's danger. Not to scare you, but just to help you understand the full picture before you're making any decisions. Let's start with the basics. Finasteride works by blocking the enzyme 5 alpha reductase type 2. That enzyme is responsible for converting testosterone into dihydrotestosterone, also known as DHT. Now, DHT is the hormone most directly linked to the male pattern hair loss. It shrinks the hair follicles over time, making them thinner, and eventually they'll be unable to grow new visible hair. By lowering DHT in the scalp and in the bloodstream, finasteride protects the follicles and slows the balding process, and in some people it reverses it or even stops it. That's the upside. But here's the problem. DHT is not just about hair. It also plays important roles in the prostate, in sexual function, in the nervous system, and even in the brain. When you're suppressing it systemically, as finasteride does, you're not just targeting the scalp. You're altering a whole hormonal pathway throughout the body. And this is where the concern starts to appear. The first major concern is sexual health. Reduced libido, erectile dysfunction, and decreased semen volume have all been reported. Early clinical trials, like the pivotal study by Kaufman and colleagues in 1998, suggest that these side effects were fairly rare. In trial, about 1.8% of men taking finasteride reported sexual dysfunction compared to 1.3% placebo. That difference seems so small that many dismissed it as insignificant. But later research told a more complicated story. A 2016 meta-analysis published in JMA Dermatology found that men on finasteride were about one and a half to two times more likely to develop sexual side effects compared to placebo. And some reports suggest that these side effects don't always go away when the drug is stopped but I'll say honestly, they usually do. One particularly eye-opening study came from Michael Irving in 2017. He followed men who developed persistent dysfunction after discontinuing finasteride. While it wasn't really a randomized trial, it documented cases where the problem simply did not resolve over time. For those individuals, this wasn't a temporary inconvenience. It's a life-altering complication. At the end of the day, we might say, oh, but it's only 0.1% that will develop persistent side effects and will have sexual dysfunction the rest of their life. But guess what? For that 0.1%, that is enough to just change their whole life. It is horrible, I imagine, being them. And that leads us to what's often called post finasteride syndrome, or PFS, or whatever we call it. The term refers to a collection of persistent symptoms, sexual dysfunction, depression, depression, anxiety, brain fog, that continues long after the drug is stopped. Now, PFS is controversial. Some scientists argue that it may be rare, or that psychological factors could play a role. But here's the key point. Regulators take it seriously. In 2012, the FDA updated Finasteride's label to include reports of persistent sexual side effects. We also seen a ton of videos even from creators beyond myself talking about how Finasteride could face a ban in the future or even become more regulated. So there is definitely something to be told about the side effects that we are seeing in Finasteride. And you can't just write off that all these things are happening. And obviously they're happening for a certain reason. Sexual side effects are the most common discussed, but they aren't the whole story. There's also evidence linking Finasteride to psychiatric risk. And a larger study in JMA Dermatology in 2017 analyzed data from more than 19,000 men. It found that finasteride users, especially younger men taking it for hair loss, had higher risk rates of depression and suicidal ideation compared to men who were not exposed to the drug. Which isn't really surprising when you understand the biology. Finasteride 
doesn't just lower DHC. It also reduces the neurosteroids in the brain, such as allopregnolone, and these neurosteroids play a key role in mood regulation and anxiety control. In animal studies, changes in these brain chemicals are clearly linked to depression-like behaviors, so there is a biologically plausible pathway connecting finasteride to mood disorders. Again, not everyone will experience this, but the data suggest that for some, the mental health burden can be just as serious as the sexual side effects. Another big unknown is what happens when men take finasteride for decades. Most clinical studies lasted between one and five years, some go even up to 10, but many men start taking this drug in their trainees and will stay on it indefinitely. We don't know the long-term data and we don't have anything that has answers for what happens when you suppress DHC for decades. For example, what might it mean for brain health, fertility and other organ systems? And this is why some researchers have hinted that changes in sperm pattern can happen, higher risk of gynecomastia or persistent mood problems in the long-term users. But overall, the evidence is still incomplete. And that uncertainty in itself should be considered when you are deciding to take finasteride. So what does this mean if you are someone struggling with hair loss and is considering finasteride? The benefits are clear. For many, it slows hair loss and restores confidence and hair in a lot of men. But the risks are not trivial. Sexual dysfunction is more common than once believed, and in some cases, it may persist. Psychiatric risks, including depression, suicidal thoughts, are supported by larger scale studies. Doesn't matter what Kevin Mann says, it's just a fact. And the long term safety profile is still not well understood. That doesn't mean that no one ever should use finasteride. I use it. But it does mean that decisions should be made with full awareness and not blind optimism. You simply need to balance the scale, your mental health, your sexual health, compared to hair. Personally for me, it's working out fine, but again, it's a risk that I take knowing full well what could happen. At the end of the day, finasteride is just not a cosmetic pill. It's a powerful systemic drug that alters hormone throughout the whole body. Some people tolerate it well, like yours truly, or even Kevin Mann, as we see, and other people, but others pay a heavy price. If you're considering it, talk honestly with a doctor who understands both hair loss and the systemic drug effects. And if you're already on it, just stay aware of mindfulness and your mental health and physical health and never dismiss new symptoms as, you know, it's just in your head. Because when it comes to something as personal as your health and as emotional as your hair, informed decisions are the best decisions. Hence why I'm doing this. And with that said, guys, I'll see you in the next video.